Hey everybody, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add in items to your event sheet here. Now, this is where mostly your programming or coding logic is. Now, Construct 3 brands itself as a no coding engine, and that is technically true. Uh, while it's possible to not code, and I absolutely love their eventing system, uh, it, it is mostly the same as code. It is a visual scripting. It's a lot more visual here. And you can see that there's a good example right there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's add in some extra non-default controls to this here, okay? And so this is a, a good way of showing you how to add in a simple event here, okay? So let's go ahead and let's add in the keyboard object. So I'm gonna double click here and we've already added in a sprite with this object type here, but I'm gonna type in keyboard, okay? And you have to add this object here in order to access the keyboard controls, okay? So for, ex for instance, if I add an event here, um, you can see that we have two different options in my event sheet here. So I have the player here. You can see that I have the eight direction here. I have a whole bunch of different things that I can, uh, I can do with this event sheet. I also have a bunch of system. Um, and again, if this is looking overwhelming to you, don't worry about this. There are lots of times where I don't even use some of these items here. I've been using it for 10 years plus, and there are, there are items here that I rarely, if ever, use, all right? So that's not the point here, but the point is that we want to add in some keyboard controls, and we don't see it in this condition here when we add in this condition. So let's hop back to our layout here, and let's add in, and you can just type in keyboard, and that's exactly what I do, is whenever I work with this here, I can either scroll through this or I can just um, type what am I want. So if I want keyboard, if I want mouse, if I want touch controls, etc. Right. So let's go ahead and let's add in the keyboard. Okay. So we're going to add in the keyboard here, and you'll notice that well, it adds it to the object types here. So so far, this game is pretty simple. We have the keyboard functionality as well as the players here. And this is a, a core coding concept as well. Let's say if you are coding something in JavaScript or doesn't really matter what else, if you need to add in some extra functionality, usually you have to bring in what's called a library. So this is the visual representation of that. You're bringing in the keyboard library so you can access keyboard controls. So let's go ahead and let's do that here. But before we actually do that, let's click on the player and let's click on default controls. And by the way, if you un check that default controls, nothing works because you have to add in those default controls yourself. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in the WASD controls. And if you're not a gamer, you probably don't know this, uh, but basically the WASD is kind of like a little um, uh, uh, arrow pad on the left hand so that you can use your mouse to aim, etc. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do is key down. Okay. So key is down here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the W key. Okay. There we go. So I just typed in the word W or oh, the letter W. Okay. So now that W is down, I'm going to go to player and then I'm going to go to simulate control. And W is up, so W is up, A is left, S is down, and D is right. So um, what I'm going to do is make sure that W is up, and there we go. So let's go ahead, let's play this again, and if I push in W, guess what? It works. But if I type in A, S, or D, nothing works out, okay? So let's go ahead and let's click on this part of the item here. Let's push Control c and then Control v three times. Okay, so we now have four. Next, what we need to do is we need to add in the A, double click, the S, and of course, the D. Okay, there we go. So now that we have WASD, well, if we play this here, every one of these buttons that I push is going to go up because the way that computers work is that they, um, the way that computers work is that they go um, read this code, or in this case, these events line by line. So if W is down, we'll simulate up. If A is down, we're going to simulate up. S, up, 
D up as well. So if I double click this up, right, and I go to left, A is now going to move left. And then I'm just going to do that for the remaining ones here. So this is going to be down. And of course, this is going to be right. Now, there was a game uh, that actually messed up these controls on purpose. And, you know, every level there would be like your controls were a little bit messed up. And you can see how that's a nice and easy and creative game uh, because you can just basically switch these around. Right. So nevertheless, now I still have the same control I had before with the arrow keys, but now it's with the WASD. So that's pretty cool. But what if you want to add the arrow keys in as well? OK, what do you do then? Well, this is actually really easy to do. So I'm going to add in and say, make this an or block. OK, and nothing happens. But if I double click on this again, I can add in another condition. And I'm going to say is key down. And this time I'm going to make it the up arrow. OK, push done. And you can see that it says either down W or arrow key up. So what that means is that I can move up with the arrow key or up with the W key. And this is something that's really good because some people might want to use the arrow keys and other people might want to use WASD. And you should always give the player the option to use which controls they want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift select all of these and I'm going to make or blocks here. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to basically do the same thing here, but I'm going to do each one of these here. And so for whatever reason, that didn't work. So let's make that an or block here. And let's add a condition here. Key is down, and this is going to be um, the down arrow. And by the way, this should be the left arrow. Okay, so... A down and then this guy here is the right arrow okay of course I'm gonna make the or block here and make the or block here as well so it seems like when I highlighted those only one of them got selected so that's interesting so nevertheless now we have the option to use either the number keys or the arrow keys, uh, the or the arrow keys, or the WASD keys. Okay, so that is how you use eventing here. Now, one last step before we end this uh, uh, video here is I'm going to add in a um, add in a group actually. Okay, and I'm going to call this keyboard controls. Okay, and this gets into the idea of basically the equivalent of cleaning up your room in code form and you want to um, just simply select all these and then drag them into the keyboard controls and that way you can hide them in there because this is a very simple game and while I make the text decently big here you know your keyboard controls can be incredibly um, incredibly complicated right so you could have maybe a page or two well maybe not a page or two but maybe a page of keyboard controls and you don't want to be uh, searching through that again and again so what I do is I just put my keyboard controls in a group here and that way I can hide it okay so I can hide the keyboard controls and you should also notice that keyboard controls is called keyboard controls and it's not something else like you know if I were to right click and edit this it's not this right that is not uh, what you want to do you want to label everything to be clear because when you if you were to show your code to another person let's see you want to make a game with somebody else you need to make sure that everything is very clear and concise and I've seen teams be completely um, uh, completely uh, uh, well basically I've seen teams fail because they haven't had good clean code concepts so whether you're making a game in Construct 3 or a project somewhere else, you always want to make sure that your code is clean, all right? So I always like doing that. It, it takes a few seconds, but it will save you a ton of time down the road.